we are very happy to, to have all the participants on board for this uh, webinar organized by uh, Humanity and Inclusion. And we thank uh, a lot also the Zero Project team for having uh, given us the opportunity to have this time slot to share uh, good practice and experience from the field. Uh, the session topic today is about how to promote global inclusive employment. And uh, we welcome two guest speakers from HI. Uh, Jennifer Ann Mendoza, uh, who is an inclusive employment technical advisor for the Forward Project in Philippines, and uh, Jose Corian, uh, disability advisor, currently assisting uh, Michelin in India. Regarding uh, the agenda of this session today, uh, we will say a few words about the overall approach from HI uh, to promote uh, inclusive employment. Uh, this approach is called the twin track uh, because one track focuses on people empowerment and the second track focuses on how to make uh, the environment more inclusive. Um, Jennifer will present a bit more deeply the first track on people empowerment uh, through the forward project in Philippines and Josh uh, will present uh, and illustrate the second track uh, with the experience we have uh, in Michelin uh, for supporting them in developing employment, uh, inclusive employment uh, practice. And then uh, we will open the floor to questions. Uh, to present a little bit more uh, deeply the twin track, I propose to watch a video from uh, Yaoko Asai, uh, who is an employment specialist for HI, and uh, she will de she's describing very well uh, in a few words on how it works. My name is Yahoko Asai. Um, I'm the Regional Inclusion Technical Coordinator in the Middle East uh, program. Uh, so my role is to cover uh, Egypt, Palestine, uh, Lebanon and Jordan. And mainly I'm supporting the project on livelihoods. So the methodology I'm using is um, not necessarily I developed. It's already like a HI has the uh, specific methodology to promote the inclusive employment for persons with disabilities. Um, so many people with disabilities in the Middle East countries, uh, they don't uh, have uh, access to uh, rewarding or meaningful uh, employment. So the HI is conducting several projects uh, to support them achieving the goal to uh, have a meaningful work in their life. Uh, so to do this, um, the methodology that we're using is the two um, intervention that we're doing, one side for the person with disabilities, first to understand what their um, background in the visual characteristics, um, the internal the aspirations for the work, professions, family's condition, and those different uh, elements of the person. We need to understand what the person wants to achieve you know, the, their future goal through the employment. And then on the side of the employers, we also understand their business background, uh, vision for their business uh, development, uh, staff members' capacity, the work itself, what is the work environment, physical conditions, the actual task conditions. So to understand those uh, conditions on both personal with disabilities and the companies uh, on each side, then uh, HS provide the personalized uh, support for individual, the person, as well as the company that this person wants to work. Well, definitely the um, certain level of uh, self-esteem from the person with disability is necessary unless the person really wants to work. And then unless the family is also understanding to try to support, it is very difficult to maintain or retain the work. Uh, then it will end up like a short and less meaningful work. And then they may just uh, getting some small salary for the work that they don't really like. And then they may quit soon. So to empower the person that he or she really wants to work, he really wants to 
do this job for their you know, the future goal, it's very important. So this will take really a long time. And there, there has to be a very personalized support, not just one time, but really continuous, like a one month, two months, sometimes it will go beyond. And the other condition is, again, from the employer side, that they also uh, need to understand the value, the benefits of hiring people with disabilities. And not only the benefits for their business, but the actual capacity or the abilities of the person with disabilities who can work, who can contribute to the business. So both uh, understanding the conditions, I mean, would be the conditions to make sure that the job matching will be appropriate and also the retention of the person with disabilities in this specific job can you know be uh, sustainable So the idea is that we wanted to, to, to show you a little bit more the, the approach of uh, humanity and inclusion when it comes to promote uh, uh, global inclusive employment. Um, and the idea is to illustrate a little bit. So before the video from uh, Yaoko, I explained briefly uh, the logic uh, of the twin tract. And as you can see, the idea is to uh, ensure that um, the person can develop the ski, it, it, his own skills um, is um, self-esteem and is prepared to employment um, and we manage to empower the person on the first track and on the second track the idea is to make sure that we uh, take off all the barriers the person can face uh, by making the, um, the environment more inclusive. So as a first step I will ask uh, Jennifer and Mendoza to explain a little bit more how they work uh, in the framework of the forward project and how they manage to promote uh, people empowerment and preparing um, participants and beneficiary to access a job. Thank you so much, Celine. And thank you so much everyone for joining us as we discuss uh, disability inclusion in the workplace. So, before I start explaining about the steps towards employment and what we try to do in the Philippines to support youth with disabilities to want to find work, uh, I'd like to tell you a little bit about the Forward Together project. So the Forward Together Empowering Youth with Disabilities in Asia project is a three-year project that has a very simple goal. Its objective is to assist or support 380 youth with disabilities residing in the Philippines and in Indonesia to access to access employment or entrepreneurial opportunities. So essentially, we try to help them find jobs that are suited to their qualifications or to start their own businesses. But today, I will talk more about the wage employment track and how we try to prepare aspiring job seekers to enter the labor market. So as you can see here, there's a flow chart and this shows the steps that the project uh, that the project makes to ensure that all youth with disabilities are prepared to enter the workforce. First, project participants or youth with disabilities are identified with the help of our partners, including disabled people's organizations, community-based organizations, women's organizations, to ensure that they fit the eligibility criteria. Next is an assessment and guidance process, which includes the creation of individual action plans. So these individual action plans are created by the youth with disabilities themselves. They will set their own goals, their own timeframes, and the challenges that they see can prevent them from attaining these goals. They will also be the ones who will take the lead in identifying potential solutions. In this step, we will also try to assess if they need assistive devices, which will help them function and perform their jobs on equal basis with their non-disabled peers. Next is the technical vocational training step, where 
aspiring job seekers who feel like they need, they still need to build up their skills before they can enter the workforce are given a chance by providing them opportunities to enroll in technical or vocational training programs depending on what their interests are. So for the Forward Together project, because we engage with a lot of companies in different industries, the TVET opportunities, the vocational opportunities are very varied. It can, it can be manufacturing, they can learn about dressmaking, they can also learn about information technology, they can also learn about encoding using digital systems, they can learn about financial management. So there's a lot of technical vocational trainings that, that they can undergo depending on what they want to pursue when they want to look for a job. After that, we also try to offer them job preparedness and soft skills training. So this is a two-part training. The first part being a life skills training that focuses on soft skills like communication, conflict resolution, workplace ethics. And then the second part is a more technical job preparedness training focused on topics like how to prepare for an interview, okay? how to follow up on a job application, so it takes all of these youth with disabilities step by step through the process of undergoing recruitment. And in, in, in this step, we try our best to work with all of our company partners. We try to invite them to these trainings. They will give talks and they will give tips to the youth with disabilities on how they can better present themselves as they apply for jobs. So once they're through with their trainings, we try to continue the process once they are onboarded, once they are hired, once they, once they sign the contract and, and are onboarded in the company, we will try to continue the coaching and mentoring process because we recognize that for many youth with disabilities, it's their first time to work. And it can be quite difficult, you know, to overcome that adjustment process where you need to adjust in a new workplace and you need to adapt. So we try to continue the coaching process and try to help them in terms of self-advocacy, especially if they feel like they need to request reasonable accommodations at work. So those are the very basic steps on how we try to prepare them for employment. Uh, next slide, please. So when you see when you see the process, this is how it looks like in the Philippines. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. Job seekers will go to uh, the Public Employment Services Office. It's the government office for skills matching. So if they're ready for employment, we make sure that all of their documentary requirements are complete. If it's complete, they will go through uh, the identification of the recommended company and HI will do initial assessment, goal setting, coaching for them, and then they will get the recommendation letter from PESO. Afterwards, job seekers will undergo the application process. It's important to note that the application process is a mainstream application process. So we try as much as we can to match them to jobs that are really fit to their qualifications and skills. So we, they will undergo the mainstream application process, but of course, with room for reasonable accommodations based on their needs. And then once they're hired, they sign the contract, whether it be an employment contract, an apprenticeship contract, or an internship contract, HI will provide them an employment starter kit. This is essentially uh, a small financial grant to help carry them over until the time that they receive their first salary and then they will still receive weekly coaching sessions with their personalized support officer until they get regularized in the company. Typically in the Philippines, the regularization process will take around three to six months. So if he's regularized, then congratulations, all is well and good. And if he's not regularized, then he will undergo the same process all over again. But this time, the stakeholders are more empowered because they already know the process, they're more familiar, and it's all over easier the second time around. So that's it for the Philippines.
Thank you very much, uh, Jen, for this uh, <clears throat> very clear explanation on how you support uh, people in developing their skills and uh, being prepared for employment. Now we're going to focus on the second part that you start to touch around um, the inclusive en environment and how employers can be ready uh, to welcome and to recruit people uh, with disabilities. And then we are going to dig a little bit more on the experience of uh, HI with uh, Michelin uh, in India. And uh, Joss is going to describe us a little bit more what they are doing. Thank you very much, Celine, and uh, thanks for the uh, thanks for introducing the project project in India, and the humanity and inclusion in collaboration with Michelin Foundation. We started a pilot program in India, and we are working with Michelin India team, especially Michelin Chennai in India uh, Chennai site team, for uh, uh, becoming a kind of a Michelin to becoming an uh, equal opportunity employer. Now, when it goes to this uh, particular project, there are some specificities in this, uh, uh, the way we are working with Michelin team. So it's not just only about the recruitment and placement, but we are working in a kind of a five dimension aspects of inclusiveness. And that is, as you see in the screen, the first dimension is the inclusive policy and leadership level. And the second dimension is HR and management practices. And uh, the third dimension is internal culture and accessibility and of course, tailored partnership. These all five dimension together makes a company as a kind of an inclusive company. So in each dimension, we have a kind of a specific action plan and we are going along with uh, uh, the, the site team, the company management team. And the another specificity of this project, we are also HI is providing a kind of on-site coaching and mentoring support. And this is not for a limited duration. It is for the entire project duration. And basically the idea is that support, the on-site support will sub builds the capacity and confidence of the employer as well as the employees. And it will make a kind of, you know, uh, hands, it, 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 it will support towards the hands-on support to uh, on, on the all process. Marion, can you just forward the next slides? Yes. Now, if you look these slides, some of the, uh, the quick look, if you see, in each dimension so far, we have completed some of the important activities or events or some initiatives. And in at leadership level, we initial stage itself, we formed a kind of a working group at the site. So that that group consists of people from different departments because Michelin Chennai sites is something around 100 uh, means around 1000 staff and uh, uh, different process, different department. So it is also very important to have a kind of a coordination in this process because we are not only focusing on some specific type of job or specific type of disability. So we, we the, the Michelin is trying to engage people with the disability in any kind of job and any kind of environment where work work level so and again company is also in the process of developing an equal opportunity policy and uh, there are a lot of internal communication and we are just starting uh, the external communication also uh, on the commitment towards inclusion at hr level we already start means the michelin chennai site already started the recruitment and we also having a kind of a inclusive apprenticeship program this is like a kind of a train and hire uh, because this will this inclusive uh, apprenticeship program also will build a kind of a gap between uh, the skills available and the requirements available. So that that is going on, and uh, most of the HR process is non-discriminatory, and uh, we have provided uh, means the project initiated different training for HR team as well as the leadership team also. Then. And uh, it is very important when we talk about inclusion, inclusive employment, it is also very important to build the internal culture to create a kind of a positive environment within the 
a company. So we have a kind of a internal culture domain and at this domain uh, there are certain n number of activities we already conducted which include sensitization, International Day of Person with the Disabilities celebrations and we also uh, train sign language for the company training team and the HR, some of the HR team members also. The other aspect is accessibility because uh, as uh, most of uh, uh, us knows that Michelin is a tire manufacturing company. It's an industry, it's a factory environment. So accessibility is very important because uh, so we conducted a kind of a detailed participatory accessibility audit and uh, uh, company is in the process of developing some accessibility features within the environment, uh, both in physical aspect as well as the communication aspects accessibility and uh, when we work uh, when a uh, company also recognized that when they are into the inclusion process it is also important for them to link with the external actors so we have a domain called part, uh, partnership domain and under this domains company also is having a kind of linkage with external actors who work on disability uh, inclusion so these are the some of the major activities, some of the activities because it cannot possible to explain all the activities uh, in a limited time. So some of the activities may mentioned in the slides. And now uh, let us hear what Michelin India site uh, express about these initiatives. So we have, uh, uh, unfortunately, it's a uh, uh, due to time uh, short notice, we could not uh, get his presence, but we have uh, Mr. B. Ranganathan. He is the director of Michelin Chennai site and we have a video from him. Let us hear about. Michelin, a world leader in manufacture of tires and present in over 170 countries, believes strongly in one of its core values. That's respect for people. Diversity and inclusion of people with disabilities naturally fit into our value system. Michelin Corporate Foundation initiated this program focused on disability inclusion in factories. Chennai plant was selected as a pilot site in collaboration with Handicap International Federation. This partnership laid a strong foundation to enhance access to employment for people with disabilities. Before we started this program, the staff and management were adept in practice of our values and were open-minded about disability inclusion, which is also evidenced in our corporate social responsibility projects. However, we needed awareness on how to systematically integrate disability into various posts inside the factory, analyze the barriers and improve working conditions. We were also having limited knowledge and experience on inclusive HR processes and approach to disability inclusive employment. We had not developed enough links with external disability employment actors also. There is a clear need for Chennai plant to become an equal empl opportunity employer and demonstrate that Michelin hires diverse talents. And what has changed today? We are recognizing that diverse workforce, which includes people with disabilities and with different capabilities, gives us a multi-skilled employee base. We have started hiring people with disabilities and are too soon starting an inclusive apprenticeship program to prepare a pipeline of talent for future employment opportunities. We have enhanced our knowledge and experience on inclusive HR processes. We are now open and flexible to mainstream disability in our policies and processes. Activities are being undertaken to develop appropriate attitudes among our employees. We are in the process of formalizing a sustainable inclusive system, which is adapted to our context. Handicap International, played a crucial role in this program. As an expert international organization in the field of disability, they provided support in understanding how inclusive we are at Chennai plant and assisted in developing a roadmap for us to become an equal opportunity employer. Hands-on support was extended to our teams 
to help identify, prioritize, and organize actions in a systematic manner. Training and other sensitization workshops help to build our knowledge and strengthen our employees' attitudes and perception on disability. With the placement of an expert at site, they provided guidance to the teams to gain good experience and helped in implementing follow-up actions. If I can offer suggestions to other employers, it's as follows. Foster an inclusive and sustainable corporate culture. Nurture a welcoming environment within the company. Encourage your teams to accept people with disabilities as their team members. Align with your country's accessibility norms. Make sure you're part of a network connected with external organizations with specific expertise in disability inclusion. Ensure that the support system is well in place for long-term sustainability. Thank you for this opportunity to share our experience on this journey to be an equal em opportunity employer. So this is the experience I, want, I would like to share from uh, India and uh, project is in progress. So it is ongoing. So that's it. Over to you, Sally. Yeah, thank you. Before uh, collecting uh, questions from the floor, I would like to, to ask you a few questions, uh, Jen and Jose. I would like to know first, <clears throat> have you got, have you developed specific approach when it comes to gender and in, when it comes to supporting a woman in accessing employment? Um, would you have some recommendation? Uh, is there any key point uh, we should pay attention to make sure uh, women access a job on the equal, equal ground as uh, men? Uh, so I don't know who wants to answer first on these questions. Jen, Jose, you can send, make me a sign if you, someone is ready to, to take over. Jen, okay, over to you. Okay, hi Celine, thanks for that question. So for the Forward Together project, we try our best at the very beginning of the project to engage women and girls with disabilities to become project participants because we recognize that it's doubly harder for women with disabilities to access employment, to access training opportunities. So what we do is we try to talk to our organizational partners. At the start of the project, we talked to them and told them that we would appreciate it if we can start referring us women or girls with disabilities who fit the eligibility criteria of the project. So at the very beginning, we tried to prioritize women and girls, especially since, you know, it's really more difficult for them to enter um, employment here in the Philippines. So, yeah, that's it for us. Yeah, uh, I just want to add one more point here, actually from India in this uh, Michelin Michelin Chennai site or Michelin India, the Michelin company always prefer gender uh, diversity in their workforce and then uh, they have a, a very specific preference for recruiting women candidates. It's it's in general, not on uh, in disability or in general. So in all there and again, uh, this disability inclusion program also very much in line with their uh, gender uh, diversity indicator. So they, we have all, all always uh, preference for women candidates and I would like to share that very recently from yesterday we have uh, selected four deaf candidates that's a woman with a disability and they also started their apprenticeship program uh, in Michelin Chennai site. Yes. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Um, I don't see some question in the chat, so I'm going to continue. Um, I was wondering um, for this kind of uh, approach, uh, what kind of uh, part the partnership would you recommend to, to partner organization to partner with? Uh, what do you think are the crucial partnership to foster to make sure to have uh, successful and uh, inclusive uh, employment uh, project or to develop practice. 
see partnership is very important because see the company is already in a process and it is going on their business it means this is just basically the private sector employees and some of them may not have expertise on disability so some some companies may have it is very important for them to have a kind of a linkage with the external actors who those who are uh, having expertise on disability inclusion that is one aspect another aspect is like it is also important to get a kind of a technical assistance or technical support in the old process for example uh, company may need to uh, develop some kind of reasonable accommodation or adaptations which makes the person's work environment barrier free so in that uh, that aspects they may need to link with some technical expert agencies or organization who are very much uh, involved in the disability inclusion aspects so in that way for me i would see partnership is very important in the dis inclusive employability process thank you very much um Please, for the participants, do not hesitate to post a question on the chat. If you have specific questions, you would like to, to know more or more uh, feedback on the experience from uh, Philippines and India. Um, maybe to continue uh, a little bit more this discussion, uh, we know that uh, skill mismatch is a big issue. Um, we have on one side uh, people with disability that might not, not have the adequate um, background to access uh, some jobs, um, as usually they, they tend to have a lower um, education level and to drop out from school uh, earlier than uh, um, some other uh, job seekers. And on the other side, we have companies that may have a very, very specific uh, uh, demands and requests regarding the skills. So have you got any recommendation you would like to provide on how to address uh, this uh, skill uh, mismatch? Jen, I see that you are ready. Yeah, so thanks for that question again, Celine. And I, I really think that this question is actually linked to the second one. I think it's very important, number one, that the project takes into account this reality, the job skills mismatch, because this is the number one challenge that many employment projects face. You know, it's very difficult to find jobs that fit the qualifications or people with disabilities who have the qualifications that companies are looking for. So number one is to recognize the problem. Number two, make sure to build strategic partnerships with the vet or technical vocational institutions that can provide training for youth with disabilities who want to enter the labor market. And it has to be a partnership that is grounded on disability inclusion. It means that you have to take time to really train the, the training institutions themselves, you know, train them on inclusive facilitation, how to make their um, classes more inclusive, to make sure that youth with disabilities are given an equal chance to learn and to develop skills that are necessary for them to have you know sustainable work later on um, other than that it's really and this is something actually that the forward together project would have liked to to explore further um, maybe the development of enrollment to employment systems within companies you know strengthening the linkages between these training institutions that train youth with disabilities in straight into the companies who are employing these youth with disabilities so from the very moment that they enter the training institution they will enroll in a certain course and this course is developed to suit the needs of a specific industry, of a specific company, which will make it easier for youth with disabilities to enter the workforce seamlessly because they have the skills necessary, the skills that are that the companies are looking for. So uh, for me, I think it's really a question of, it, it's not just about the training institutions or access to education, it's really, a comprehensive approach is needed you know the, the the community has to be united in making sure that all services are inclusive so that 
youth with disabilities are given a fair and equal chance, not just to learn, but also to work. Can, can I also add on that? Yeah, I completely sure, agree sure. with Jennifer's point. I agree. But uh, uh, to add on that, I just want to make one more point on this uh, to how we can bridge this gap. Internship is, I would see as a kind of a one possibility. The internship program, like uh, for example, like train and hire. Uh, I, I, it could be one one possibility is like the way uh, Michelin in India is uh, doing the apprenticeship program. It's a paid training and they will because company may have their own uh, uh, requirement uh, 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 with regard to the uh, place where this person needs to work. So but we, they may not get that kind of skill set. So it is also and again uh, it is also uh, very difficult to get a kind of a talented or the skilled uh, person uh, with disability. So just to hire and then train them like uh, over a period it can be go like uh, maybe one month or two months sometime it may go nearly one 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 year also and then uh, during the training period they also will get kind of a stipend and any other uh, facilities company want to provide and then uh, after the training they will be a kind of a uh, the company can try to enroll these uh, uh, these uh, trainees or candidates to the permanent uh, placement position. So that is also one important aspect of this. I see a question here. It says, are people with intellectual disabilities or learning difficulties included in these projects to both Philippines and India? If yes, what adaptations have been made? So I propose that maybe you, uh, Joss and Jennifer, you answer this question. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll go first. Yeah. So, so yes, in the Philippines, uh, we try to include every type of disability. So including people with intellectual or learning difficulties, learning disabilities rather. So because we try to adapt an approach of skills-based hiring, there there have been very very few uh, needs for adaptations so far in the forward together project related to intellectual or learning disabilities uh, project participants with learning or intellectual disabilities because as much as possible we try to match them to jobs that are within their uh, within their skills, within their qualifications. For example, we have a specific project participant with a learning disability, and really his background is related to the hospitality industry. He used to work as a housekeeper in a hotel. So his task was to, to, to make the beds, essentially. And so we tried to place him in another work that that was suited to something that he is used to that he likes you know because he's the one who leads his action plan so he was the one actually to identify that opportunity in a local laundry shop so he was placed in a local laundry shop where his task involved taking care of the clothes that are already washed. So he, his task essentially is to arrange everything before it's delivered to the client. So it's very suited to his skills. He likes working there. It's very near his house. And so in that case, you know, there is very, very little adaptation needed because it's really a job that was identified by the person himself. He likes that job. So th there was really very little need. Of course, we still provided support to the companies, still provided awareness trainings, et cetera, et cetera. But for the person himself, there was really very little um, adaptation necessary. Of course, um, in India, I would love to hear uh, how you dealt with this um, situation. No, as far as this question concerned, this uh, this particular project to which we are uh, HI is working with Michelin India. So far, we haven't started recruiting any because uh, see, it's not like uh, uh, not we it, definitely this is uh, there in the uh, plan, but the problem is because of this COVID and uh, pandemic uh, reason, the recruitment rates are very low nowadays because uh, that's uh, so we are just waiting for some more time. 
So definitely uh, we will also look for the possibilities for this and then maybe HI also will look how what kind of roles, what kind of reasonable accommodation required for these people with intellectual disabilities and we will definitely will support Michelin uh, India uh, to achieve that level. Yeah. Thank you. We have uh, another question on uh, on, the ch on the chat regarding the scale up. How can this experience from Philippines and India be scaled up within the countries and beyond? What are your thoughts? So how do you think we could uh, scale up this initiative and uh, for your context? For India, what we are trying to develop a model basically. And this model we will be we will also capitalize as a best practice and then we will try to disseminate this best practice among other employers and uh, uh, that obviously unfortunately we could not uh, uh, hear the audio because in the Michelin Chennai site director himself is giving some kind of suggestions in the last part of the video uh, uh, what what which way he he is giving some suggestions to other employers also uh, which way we can promote the inclusion within the workforce so definitely we are in the process of capitalizing this project uh, project together with michelin and then we will try to promote within other uh, networks other employers and other forums yeah that is a plan for us and definitely humanity and inclusion at quarters level. Uh, we are also trying to promote this uh, model uh, like providing technical assistance to the we are open to provide technical assistance to the companies who are willing to promote employment for people with disabilities. Thank you. So engagement of other actors, replication of tools, um, replication of the, the good practice, formalization of the good practice, uh, plus uh, trying to promote and engage other actors would be a way to, to scale up. Jennifer, would you would you share some thoughts, thoughts on this question? I think it's really very similar to what they're already doing in India. Just to cite an example, because of the pandemic, it was it's it's really the same situation all over. It's really very difficult to uh, place young persons with disabilities in companies that are willing to hire because many companies are suffering from an economic downturn. You know, many are closing or scaling down their workforce. So what we did as a way to cope up with the negative effects of the pandemic is to shift into a more community-based employment and skills development system where we try to negotiate, we try to talk with local government offices if they can take on interns with disabilities to try to help build their skills. Uh, this will uh, take maybe one to two months and then afterwards some of them are regularized. Some of them are hired within these offices, you know, and they're provided with employment. I think if we're talking about opportunities for scaling, it would be a great potential for the Philippines to scale up inclusive hiring in the public sector, meaning the government uh, side, ensuring that government offices are also inclusive employers. Because here in the Philippines, the government is the biggest employer. You know, they employ the largest amount of people, and it makes a lot of sense. Before they can. Um, before they can provide inclusive policies, inclusive laws, they need to also experience what it's like to work with colleagues in the government who are persons with disabilities. So for me, that would be an awesome opportunity for scaling. Also, the focus on gender, the focus on women or youth who, are L who identify as LGBTQ, or maybe in areas that are outside of the urban area, because uh, here in the Philippines, the project is mostly focused in Manila. We don't have interventions so far in peri-urban or rural areas. So I think that would be a great opportunity also because there are a lot of um, economic activity outside of Manila that maybe we can explore. Thank you very much. I was thinking also that uh, the forward projects got specific relation with the national employment agencies 
and also maybe with the um, national um, division regarding um, uh, vocational training. And I'm thinking also collaborating uh, with uh, public services, but at the level, uh, at the national level, can be also a way to, to scale up. And I was wondering if you want, if you want to say a word on that. Yes, definitely. I, I, I agree with you, Celine, totally. Because here in the Philippines, one of the drivers of inclusive employment in particular has been the local public employment and services office. And it would be great if the Forward Together project can scale up and try to engage with the national level, which is the Department of Labor and Employment, so as to make an inclusive employment policy a more of have more of a nationwide scope. Um, and it also builds the capacity, you know, of local stakeholders that in the future, it doesn't require HI's intervention for them to be able to do their own inclusive employment projects. I think that's the, the, the ultimate goal is to build the capacity of all our partners, of all our local stakeholders, so that eventually, even if the project ends, the, the intervention, the impact of the intervention is still there. And I agree totally because that is something that the, the Forward Together project has um, have had difficulty engaging with the national level of the technical vocational uh, agency, which is TESDA. And this is something that in the future, maybe we can look into to strengthen this uh, link with the national technical vocational agency of the government. Thank you very much. You were referring actually to rural areas. And uh, as part also of the scale up, um, I guess uh, skill development is of course a, a big issue and how to promote uh, better access to vocational training skills in rural area is still a big challenge. And is there where um, a huge option can be promoted like uh, apprenticeship, uh, like uh, community based training, like uh, mobile, uh, mobile training. But all these options need to be scaled up and discussed with uh, the national level to make sure that uh, as much as possible uh, uh, skill development opportunities are made available in rural areas that may a little bit far away from uh, the services available uh, in the cities. This session is nearly uh, coming to an end. So um, again, we've got a, a few minutes more. So if you had any uh, question uh, burning your fingers, do not hesitate to ask uh, the question uh, in the chat. And uh, meanwhile, I'm going to turn to the our two guest speakers, uh, maybe to have a, a, a last input on what would be the recommendation if you've got one organization, one company, um, one public services that, are, that is willing uh, to engage um, in the inclusive employment, uh, what would be the, the final tips you would like to share uh, with them? See, uh, from my side, see, there is a lot of movement is happening nowadays because uh, there is a lot of awareness is happening, sensitization is happening, a uh, lot of programs, a lot of employers are coming forward to recruit people with disability because people realize that this is a need for our. So, but one thing what uh, uh, in India uh, and uh, like if you see the most of the things happening in banking, hospitality and uh, IT sector. Uh, yes, it is very important. That is good. But uh, but the same time we need to see there are uh, the manufacturing sector, how it is progressing. So this is also very important. But the problem from our experience, what we learned is uh, maybe the employer is very much willing. Maybe employer is very much ready. But the problem is there might be like a kind of a question how how it can be done. So it is also very important for you know, uh, to create a kind of a more awareness uh, among the industries uh, uh, like it is possible. Uh, and uh, if the commitment is there, then obviously it, it can be happen. And so the employers, it is also important to stay in touch with the external actors who are uh, working in the inclusion so that they can get the support they can uh, means we can promote their they can offer a lot of things for people with disabilities yes 
for me, just two things. So number one, youth with disabilities want to work and they can work okay, in any industry as long as they are provided with the appropriate support. And number two, we recognize that for companies, disability inclusion can be intimidating. It can be a long process. It can be a long journey, but we can provide, with, we can provide support and in the end, it's worth it because it's a win-win solution, not just for the person, but also for the company. You know, there are concrete gains for the company and even for the community at large. So essentially, a society, a company that is more inclusive of, person, of persons with disabilities is a better company. Okay, so a society that is more inclusive for persons with disabilities is a better society. Essentially, disability inclusion is a win-win for everyone involved. So, as a sum up, we would say that uh, first, what what I heard from uh, your comment is that um, inclusiveness or is a kind of path, and it takes time. So somehow, uh, it's important to to set goals that are realistic. Uh, not to be uh, over ambitious, uh, let's say, uh, for the first three months. Uh, it requires to set a path and uh, an action plan a little bit as described uh, just uh, on how to, how to set some kind of priorities uh, for becoming more inclusive. I heard also from your comment that um, we need to build up maybe more the business case of inclusion and showing how um, uh, recruiting people with disabilities is a benefit for everyone in the company and outside in the community and how in the company it brings added value, which is important. There's still a need uh, regarding the, the support you mentioned, Jen, on the fact that we need also to make sure that there is an appropriate support uh, from a range of various services in um, supporting uh, the youth or, the, or, or adults uh, to access employment. And so there is the need to, to have a kind of um, uh, uh, setup of a proximity service that are really working well uh, all together in a coordinated way. I've heard also that um, partnership are extremely important and uh, you, are, you can't do everything alone. And somehow it can be extremely useful uh, to develop some partnerships um, externally to help on a very specific topic. It can be, for instance, uh, uh, raising awareness session. It can be also on uh, some reasonable accommodation. And after, there is also a point on, that the, on the fact that reasonable accommodation are cheap. That's not a, a huge uh, financial burden. And the question is much more uh, to make sure that the reasonable accommodation is, is discussed with the person uh, herself or himself in the sense that they are the first one to know what is the best for them and making sure actually that there is a, a, a various uh, um, stakeholder that can be mobilized if necessary. But at the end of the day, it's much more a question of uh, creativity and flexibility uh, rather than a financial cost. And that may be uh, a few message uh, to display. And uh, last point, uh, raising awareness of uh, different kind of stakeholders is still key. Even though the community uh, regarding promo promoting uh, uh, inclusive employment is growing, um, there is the, for instance, there is the ILO GBDN uh, who has been created a few years to facilitate and to create a space uh, so that companies can uh, exchange on, on their practice, but there's still uh, a way to go to continue to, to engage more stockholders uh, to make sure that they're also convinced that uh, in, uh, inclusion is a win-win uh, solution. Uh, we are coming to an end uh, for this uh, webinar. I would like to thank all the participants who stay with us, even though we had like a uh, so many problems regarding the sound, the, back no, the background, and I hope it has been all right, and we will see that after the session. I would like also to thank a lot uh, the participants, the guest speaker, uh, Jennifer and Jose, for 
participating to this webinar and um, and having share, shared your thoughts. Marion from HI who has been working with us and uh, the Zero Project uh, for the invitation. Uh, and I hope you will enjoy the rest of the session. Thank you very much. I wish you a very good day.